Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look at a sequel to an already fantastic action adventure game from 2019 with a Plague Tale Requiem. When I first played this game on the PC, when it was offered as a free title on Epic Games with the first title with Innocence, I was shocked to see how this game wasn't better known. This action adventure stealth game had fantastic visuals and was paired with even a better story that gripped you till the very end. It was one of the sleeper hits that you will find that saved your season in fantasy football that no one else knew about but you. Can they truly evolve and innovate past the first with the sequel with Requiem? A Plague Tale Requiem was developed by Asobo Studio and released by Focus Entertainment for the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, Windows PC, and for the Xbox Series X and S. The game is exactly like the first as an action-adventure stealth game. You play in third person and use stealth strategic tactics aligned with problem-solving puzzles to survive and move forward. The story stars Amicia and her younger brother Hugo, who are coming off right after Innocence ended in the first installment. Hugo has a mysterious blood disease that runs in the family and gives him powers to control the rats at the time during the Black Plague, which killed millions and millions of people. In Innocence, Hugo was used for political power and eventually broke away with Amicia's help. They now travel to seek and help to resolve the problem of his blood disease before Hugo is completely taken over. The story here is probably the best part of the game as the writing, pacing, and storytelling come together perfectly. The first installment with Innocence was great and Requiem is even better. The story pushes the relationship between Amicia and Hugo so much further that you have to see the story to the very end even though the story is really nothing special and easy to figure out what comes next. It's how they tell the story is why the game is so gripping. The voice actors for the most part return from Innocence for Amicia and Hugo. The relationship and development are done so well with the writing and actors together really make a believable, emotionally charged story where you are truly invested in what happens to each and every character is a testament on how well done the storytelling really is. Yes. Wait, you see that tree? I'm sure I can reach it faster than you. Now? Why? Because you're a little chicken. I'm not. You are. <laughs> Show me then. Three, two, one. Hey! <laughs> You're going to be a chicken! <laughs> I feel at times this game reminds me of Tomb Raider Reboot, where Laura kills for the very first time. Of course, Laura then becomes this killing machine later with no guilt, where Amicia struggles with what she has done and truly makes her look more human than that and even more interesting. Maybe... I'm just not very good at being human. You are. This is why you have doubts. The soundtrack here is absolutely incredible. I listened to the title screen just to hear the entire track before even playing the game, it was so well done. The soundtrack is perfectly placed throughout the game and really intensifies major scenes to the action portion of the game to really pump up your adrenaline and keeping you glued to the television. Probably the worst part of the game is the stealth and puzzles that you go through. 
The only reason why I say this is that I personally hate puzzles and I'm not good at stealth games like Metal Gear or Splinter Cell. I wound up killing most of the enemies I confronted and those who got in the way was if I didn't have enough equipment or I was about to die myself. Although not liking stealth and puzzles as much, which is my personal opinion, I did love the way you have abilities that you gain and can use to proceed through the game. You can certainly kill enemies or proceed like a ghost where no one sees you and also use the abilities like alchemy to fight and use the rats. Most of the time the rats are part of the puzzle, but there are times you can just use the rats to kill the enemies in your way by controlling them or taking out white of the enemies that is the only thing that the rats hate. I cannot meet to open them doors I know what's in. No time to cry over them. You go sweetie. Yes. Yes. I'll open the safe way. Oh no! Get out of there! As I play through the game, you do repeat what you have learned and done before to move on and the puzzles become easier and easier. Even when you're not sure what to do next, the character you travel with suggests hints on how to move forward if you are in a jam. I leave it to you, Arno. Let's go. Looks like something you could use, no? With your crossbow magic. Let me see. The visuals here are some of the best I have ever seen for a console to date. Almost every scene really pops where you can't help but marvel at the environments. The game plays at a 1440p resolution at 30 frames per second. This might anger the new gaming enthusiasts as there is no option for 60 frames per second and only on PC. The game does need more raw power that I could provide, but my, at a 1080p and low settings on my PC, 60 frames per second is possible, but will stutter at times and is inconsistent during stealth missions as you find in foliage like tall grasses that causes the game to buckle at times. What a mess. Now what use do you have for our meat and honey, huh? You're dead. Let's cross now. They're going to kill us. No, because they won't see us. Matthias, come. They got brand out pretty bad. On the Series X, it is a consistent, smoother 30 frames per second and doesn't bother me as the game is generally played at a slower pace anyways. There is no real need for the extra smoothness of response time as the gameplay, stealth, and puzzles never move to the point where it is truly needed. I felt it was better on console this time around and how I would prefer to play it. Sorcerer, your fight is far from over. Your mother's going to wonder where we are. It's been a long road. You have the right to stretch your legs. <sighs> yes. Overall, the game story is what keeps you hooked to the very end, but the visuals of the time period is done so well that it rivals everything that has come out this year. With a fantastic soundtrack to boot, this game is what you would expect in satisfying the player from beginning to end. Although the stealth and puzzles are fairly straightforward, the game is a must play in my book. A Play Tale Requiem gets a 9.0 out of 10 for its engaging storytelling, spectacular visuals with enough innovation in the gameplay and options that help you power through those stealth and puzzle missions. That's it for this look at A Plague's Tale Requiem. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and Greg take us out of here and I will see you all next upload. To get your boat, I know someone. Who? A smuggler, discreet chip, fast, what you need. Great. More felons. Jess, get used to it. This is your life now, so if you want to get to Lacuna after the mess you've made, it's that boat or a ten-mile fucking swim. I can't wait!
to get on a boat. Ha. Huh. You see that? That is the right attitude. That is the right attitude. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.